The following program is sponsored in part by Trader Joe's Grocery Store in LaGrange and by Flavor Cooking School in Forest Park. Hi, welcome to Cooking Around Town. I'm Riley Henderson. Today I'm going to take you inside the chic new sushi restaurant, Sushi Samba Rio, where they combine Brazilian and Peruvian and Japanese styled cuisine to create the ultimate sushi fusion. Afterwards, I'm going to teach you how to make a pan fried tofu with caramelized sauce. But first, off to Sushi Samba. I've been cooking for about 10 or 11 years. I basically realized I wanted to do it when I was about 14 years old. First you have to get a well-rounded team, you know, um, just you have different levels of experience within that team and just you need a good leader, somebody that can help keep everybody working together and oriented and you have to be well organized. Um, a lot of it has been uh, self-trained, you know, working throughout the business, schooling at Cornell for hotel restaurant management, uh, did some training in France for patisserie, um, did some training in um, Maryland for uh, sugar art, I've done some ice sculpture training. Um, I've worked basically throughout the world, I've worked in Malaysia, I've worked in Hong Kong, i worked in um, Las Vegas, New York, uh, Chicago, Dallas, Florida, so I mean, the scope of um, uh, just talent and people I've worked with varies so much, but it's uh, really helped make me more well-rounded in this business. Each one adds its own unique experience. I mean, each place is has its own touch, you know, it adds its own flair to it. You know, you learn different things at each place. This place specifically, you are dealing with a lot of different cuisines, a lot of different cultures, and it's fun trying to just meld everyone together. Um, it's just, the Sushi Samba is, it's a fun atmosphere. It's, you know, it's kind of clubby, but yet it's kind of um, food oriented. You know, it's, it's just a lot of things melded together and it's fun, you know. Sushi Samba is a totally different concept. Um, what it involves is a mixture of Japanese, Brazilian, and Peruvian cuisines. Um, what happened is early in, this, or in the early uh, 20th century, there was a mass um, influence or mass, um, uh, basically, a lot of the Japanese settled into uh, Brazil, Peru, South America, started, and they started melding with the South American cuisine, uh, henceforth giving us today's concept. Um, it's such an untapped um, resource or culture that nobody's really combining together and um, the owner Shimon uh, Boscova and uh, Matt Johnson have tapped into that and created this wonderful concept sushi samba combining Japanese sushi and the samba flair where you get nice spices you get fresh flavors typically I mean we had the Japanese sushi in front where it's you know a showcase sushi bar then in the back we kind of hide the kitchen uh, where we uh, prepare the Brazilian meat, we got Brazilian food, Peruvian food, uh, a lot of the South American hearty dishes. We got uh, grilled meat platters, we got mocheca dishes, which is very traditional for uh, Brazil. Um, I mean, we do the South American beef maki roll, we do crispy snapper. So we got a lot of different cuisines as well. Well, right up front, at the main centerpiece, which is our uh, Japanese sushi bar. Um, where people can sit down, they can um, watch the sushi chefs prepare ceviches, tierditos, um, traditional sushi rolls, and we have our non-traditional sushi rolls, your uh, nigiri pieces, uh, and the sashimi. Um, and then at the front bar we have a really fun atmosphere, lounge bar area, uh, that people can just enjoy some very creative sambatini, some different creative drinks. Uh, they're very native to South America. We have the caipirinhas, uh, we have mojitos. Uh, then coming up in hopefully May or early June, we're going to be opening the rooftop, which is going to be a super lounge, which is going to be really nice for the summer time. 
Uh, and then in the back kitchen we have um, myself cooking the hot food uh, where we have just uh, a nice meat station, we have saute stations where they do lots of different fish and um, vegetarian options. Uh, we have salads that are just very light and refreshing. And then we have a great pastry station that um, we have a very creative pastry chef, uh, Vera Tong from New York, who has done an excellent job putting together a very well-rounded pastry menu. When a guest looks at a plate and says, wow, you know, this looks great, can't wait to eat it, then they eat it and they're even more happy. All right, what we're going to be preparing today is a sesame crusted tuna with a little salad of uh, shea fennel. Um, we got some red radish in here, uh, edible orchid, micro veggies, jumbo lump crab meat. We're going to be tossing this with a nice chai vinaigrette. And then first thing what we're going to do is uh, first we're going to crust the tuna with uh, black and white sesame seeds. Give it a little seasoning of uh, salt and pepper. <clears throat> Key here for this dish is what we're going to do is we're going to get the pan nice and hot. Add a little just uh, vegetable oil. <clears throat> While we're waiting for that to get hot, we're going to uh, take a little salad mixture. Toss it with a little chive, chive oil. A little salt and pepper mixture. Take our plate. As you notice, a lot of the things here are very vibrant, very light, very colorful uh, colors that we have in this dish. Very uh, much to, to um, complement the restaurant. Everything here is light, vibrant, full of color, full of flavors. All right, now that pan's getting nice and hot, you can tell by it's starting to smoke a little bit. Add the tuna. This is going to be seared rare, so basically what we're going to do is cook it on each side real fast, just to sear and lock in all the flavors. You don't want to get more than a golden brown. The sesame seeds will burn. This is a dish easy enough to do at home. Just go to your local uh, fishmonger. They can slice up some uh, tuna for you. You can get your sesame seeds at any grocery store. Sure, it's seared on all sides. All right. Then we're going to slice the tuna. it on your plate. Take a little, uh, we got a spicy chili sauce. <clears throat> and a little more of the um, chive oil. Give it a nice little color, a little flavor. And voila, there we go. Hi, and welcome back. 
As I promised, I'm going to teach you how to make pan-fried tofu today. What I have here is I put together a marinade of shoyu, which is Japanese for uh, soy sauce. And I've also added some mirin, which is a sweet rice wine used mainly for cooking. And I've also added some chopped up chives. What I'm going to do is, is I've taken this tofu. What you can do is you can, you can buy this tofu in blocks. And what you want to do is, is when you get it in a package, it's going to be soaking in a, in a liquid. You want to press you want to press the tofu so that the liquid is all drained and that way you'll get a more crunchy tofu once the, with the finished product. What you want to do is, is you want to take this tofu, chop it into eight blocks, and then set it into the marinade. And you're going to want to let that sit for like eight, ten minutes. And what I'm going to do while we're waiting for that is heat up some garlic chips. And how we're going to do that is, is we're going to add some just some, ol not olive oil, uh, some vegetable oil to a hot pan. And then I've got thinly sliced garlic cloves here. We're gonna wanna, you wanna wanna spread that oil and then just dump the chips on there. And you wanna leave those on there until they're uh, nice and crispy so that it's like a chip. While we're waiting for that, you're gonna wanna turn the tofu so that it's evenly, the marinade is evenly distributed. And then once that's, we sh that should be fine in a couple more minutes. But uh, the Japanese believe in a very, very fresh way of cooking. So they, they often, to, ne to almost never, cook or, uh, or use a lot of sauces in their dishes, such as sushi. If you've ever had sushi, it's mainly fresh fish, not, not cooked. And um, they believe that the that the only way to eat food is fresh. But tofu is obviously processed. What it is, is it's, it's actually bean curd. It's a, um, what they actually do is, is they crush up the beans and then they extract the milk from it. And what is extracted, what they do is, is they use a coagulant to kind of curdle the milk, like, like cheese almost, except it's a lot healthier than cheese. What you're gonna wanna do is just check on those uh, Check on those chips. Make sure they're not burning. Maybe scoop those around a little. You want to make sure your pan's pretty hot because, but it's not going to take too long for these to cook. So what you're going to want to do is, is just keep it pretty hot, but, but keep an eye on it too because you don't want to burn them. As you can see, they're starting to brown a little. So they're starting to brown, but you want them a little bit darker. You want them almost completely browned. Then once again, we're going to turn this tofu. Now, one of the great things about tofu is, is by itself, it's almost completely flavorless. But uh, one of its great qualities is, is when you cook it, it it's great at, at absorbing any flavors that you add in, such as this, uh, these chives here. It's going to taste great. And a little bit of soy sauce, even though soy sauce isn't usually used for cooking purposes, it's usually kept as a dip or some sort of condiment off to the side. But uh, in this case, we're going to use it as a marinade. And it's going to taste fantastic. So these chips are, are looking almost done here. So you can see they're starting to brown up. If only you could smell this. It smells great. All right, these are about done. So what you're going to do is, is just take a napkin or a cooking towel of some sort, and you're going to want to dump these on there. But you're, what, you're going to want to keep the oil on there because we're going to cook the tofu in here in a little bit. If you've ever cooked bacon, it's kind of like that because you want to 
drain the excess oil. All right, now we've got our chips out. We're gonna take the uh, we're gonna take the tofu out of the marinade and just place them. It doesn't matter really which side, but you're gonna want to place them like this. Now when you do this, it's going to kind of look like Stonehenge here. You can see that. It's okay to move it around with your hands, just make sure not to touch the pan, obviously, because you don't want to burn yourself. And then like I said before, we uh, press the tofu to drain all the liquid, the excess liquid. And uh, what that's going to do is, is once this starts browning on each side, it's going to make it crispier and that's what we want. It's absorbing the, uh, the, the flavors of everything we cook in it pretty well. Now it's going to take a while for each side to cook and you want to make sure that your heat isn't too hot because you want to cook it all the way through. It's not like meat where if you don't cook it all the way through you're going to get sick. It's, you could eat it raw if you wanted, but uh, what you want to do is you want to keep the heat anywhere from medium to high and uh, just make sure it gets cooked all the way through. If not, that's fine, but it just helps it, it makes it a little crispier. What you're going to want to do is, is after you've started to cook these a little, see it, it's starting to brown a little on the bottom here, but uh, it's not quite done yet, but what you want to do is, is you're going to want to add this marinade to it. What's going to happen is, is the marinade is going to thicken and uh, later on you'll use it as a kind of sauce. Now the garlic chips, what you're going to do with these is, is later on you're going to use them as a little decoration, if you will. And this original recipe it calls for sake, which is, a, which is Japanese rice wine. Obviously for legal reasons I'm not allowed to use that, but uh, if you want to substitute that for uh, a, little extra, a little extra of the sweet rice wine, which is just cooking. Or, uh, or a little extra soy sauce, which is what I did, should be fine. You want to check on these. Make sh you want to check on these. Make sure they're not burning at all, because there is a definite difference between burnt and crispy. You also want to make sure that uh, that the chives don't burn. You just want them slightly wilted. I'll turn up the heat a little here. Now what we're going to decorate this with is, is we have uh, watercress leaves here. And you can buy these at any, any grocery store local or organic or produce or whatever. But uh, it's best fresh. You can get these in the can too, but you just don't get the same effect. You can see here, they're starting to brown all around. And that's, this is about the consistency you want on each side. Maybe a little bit darker. Mm -hmm. 
You want to make sure it's not too hot because you don't want to burn off all the sauce either. You should really let these sit for uh, a little bit longer, but for time, pur time purposes, I'm gonna just speed this up a little. And if you're ever shopping for tofu, uh, it, it could get a little confusing. There's there's quite a quite a bunch of different kinds. You can get a for this dish, I, I suggest getting uh, extra strong tofu, which is just, it's harder, it's more firm, and that way it won't break apart. Soft tofu is used more for just as itself, less cooking. If you use it for cooking, it would, it would be fine, but there's a better chance that it's going to fall apart, and we don't want that. If it always gets too hot, you can always take it off the flame for a little while. And if it starts to dry up, if the sauce starts to dry up, you could add a little bit more uh, shoyu or, or uh, mirin. But you want to be careful because if, if the pan is too hot, it's just going to sizzle up. So this, the pan's a little too hot right now, so I'm not going to add it, but uh, we'll just let this cook. We need to add a little bit when it's done. Now, if you've ever eaten at a Japanese restaurant, you may wonder why the uh, portions are so small, because as Americans, we're used to having large portions like steak and potatoes and whatnot. But uh, in the uh, early 70s, French, French chefs developed a type of cooking called a uh, nouvelle cooking, which is just small portions, and it becomes, the cooking becomes more of an art form rather than portions. And people tend to forget that Japanese meals uh, are more than are more like anywhere from three to four different different courses. What I'm going to do is is I'm going to take this off the heat now. Turn this off. And I'm going to grab my plate. place these on here. And now there's no specific way to make it an artsy or, or a, dish, a fancy dish. It's just arrange it however you think looks good. And that should be fine. And what you want to do is, is this butter is a little melted, you want to want to get something a little bit firmer. But then you're going to want to place this just right on top. And then take some of these, these garlic chips, just sprinkle them over. And then you want to take the water crusts and just lay it on like that. 
And that's about it. For more information on recipes featured on Cooking Around Town, you can visit our website at www.irbtv.tv. That's it for this show. I hope you've learned something. Uh, thanks for joining us on Cooking Around Town. I'm Riley Henderson. Thank you.